Today, a quick look at the Intel Nook. This is the Skull Trail model, that's what it's known as, or NUC 6i 7K YK. This is a mobile Core i7 processor system. It has been opened, and Windows 10 has already been installed on it. This is a borrowed machine that I have for only a couple weeks, until maybe mid-August. And it already has the more professional looking cover. This is my own, my own first look at a Nook, in person. We'll just take the parts out and we'll have a look at the machine again. All right, what's in the box? Some manuals and so forth. Probably. So it looks like a poster there, poster style, instruction sheet, explaining all the ports, plastic that everything came in, the gamer focused original lid that can easily be swapped out with the more server looking lid. And then finally a larger power supply. Definitely larger than the super servers we've been playing with lately because it's got a GPU, so it's going to use more watts. And if we have a close look at the power supply, we get all the details. So if we look carefully here, the output is 6.32 amps. All right. And a uh, Mickey Mouse ears style power cord. And let's have a look at the distraction feed background at the unit itself. Honeycomb on the side that is not letting air through, just for looks. Kensington lock hole, I think. Now we're talking some uh, heat veins. It's a practical grill there. DC input of 19. Optical. Gigabit. Two USB 3s. USB 3 1. Display port. Thunderbolt or USB Type C. HDMI. So it's a very nice set of modern interfaces that are very consumer focused on things like Windows 10, but works well with VMware ESXi with one change in the BIOS. Okay, right now this thing has a NEMA plate on it, making it quite a bit heavier. We take that off and then it'll be resting on these rubber feet. So I'm going to go ahead and take off that plate and then do some sound measurements and look under the hood. And there we go, an inside look at the Nook. Here you have one Ethernet interface. You do have people getting creative with using M.2 to get another Ethernet interface. And you have two M.2 slots, but no room for a 2.5 inch drive. So as long as you're aware of those limitations, if you're ordering a Nook for whatever use you have, like a you know, home theater machine or light gaming near your TV, well, this seems like a pretty you know awesome choice. So now I'm gonna do some tests of watt burn and noise output when powering this thing up. First thing I take some pictures though under the hood. I couldn't find any on the web that were really quite good. So it's time for me to fix that problem. How about I use that PH1 Philips for the SSD removal. This is M.2 SATA in there right now. So it's a Samsung 850 Evo. So you can have SATA in the M.2 interface, but what we really want is NVMe faster speeds and far less latency and this nook is the first one that supports full speed speeds that pci bus 3.0 by four lanes can get you in the past they're crippled to about 1500 megabits per second now people are getting the full speed of the samsung 950 pro i'm not worried about static discharge it's an extremely humid day let me just get that out there so i'm going to go ahead and put this in and set it right down with that lightly magnetized Tip. And 
that's it. That's how ridiculously easy it is to install <coughs> storage on a notebook. Let's have a close look at the metal plate. It's got pretty thick gauge metal that's not going to bend easily here. You got some RF shielding foam there, and you've got screws that stay in place and don't get lost. And you got more RF shielding foam up back. So a very nicely constructed foot or bottom to the unit. Clearly labeled front as well. And nice rubbery feet with the mount that I showed you earlier, evident right there. So a nice design. All right. So how do we reassemble? Well, if you look at the fonts or logo, you'll see that would be right side up. So currently you're looking at the bottom of the unit. And what would front be? Front would be that part, the bezel. So, go ahead and reassemble. Okay, time to put the lid back on it. Now, there is no front or back indication on that plastic, but there's a RF shield here that goes over that hole. So pretty obvious which way the lid will go on at that point. I'll point out that the holes are nicely threaded, metal there. So they'll likely be able to handle many uses. So we're back on the H2.0 tip bit of the screwdriver, ready to put those screws back in. So I will say, uh, kind of some closing thoughts on the physical design. It's quite lovely. Um, attention to detail, the fit and finish, the way the product feels is quite good. It's got a lot of that, you know, show off for friends and family aspect to the product that is partially the reason one of the many reasons for the Intel Nook's, you know, success as a product line. And obviously this form factor and, and prettier look than any previous Nook you know, is kind of taking it to the next level for the design. So it's good that the uh, product line continues to thrive. And I do like the physical aspects of assembly. And having worked on Mac Minis and other stuff before, working on this thing is, you know, trivially easy. Now we got our rubber feet, we got a nice solid base, this part's metal, a lid that can be removed, and my little marker here to do some sound tests. So to me, that's going to be interesting. There is no S in there, but there's an M.2 blank drive, so it's going to be very much like my other recent test with some Super Micro products. So we'll see how this goes. Sound test next. And now it's time to measure sound, or decibels, of the Nook 6i7KYK. System is powered off. We'll take a look at ambient noise in the room without me speaking. About 36 dB. The system is plugged in. There is no humming noise from the power supply at all. And now I'm going to go ahead and move this box out of the way and power up. So rather quickly, the level drops. Now you know why my decibel meter is only a foot away. I want to get a chance of recording the differences between systems that I've been testing these last couple days. And I'm glad I made the choice to keep the decibel meter rather close. So we got 12 inches between the foam and the front bezel here, and about 15 inches between the speaker and this iPhone 5. Uh, this is obviously showing you kind of the spectrum or the frequency spectrum of the sounds that you're hearing. So yeah, very impressive from a sound perspective from the Nook. Now I'm going to flip around to have a look from the backside.
They're pretty much indistinguishable from 36dB at ambient room noise. Went to maybe 36.5 with enough on but idling after a power on test. No operating system, remember. So that's it for this look at the Nook and its idle sound output. Hopefully you found this video helpful. There'll be more like it at tinkertry.com.